Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over some of Blender's more interesting features as far as volumes go and rendering realistic volumes inside of Blender. Now, it might not seem like it, but off the bat, Blender is not set up correctly to render volumes, at least inside of Cycles. So we're going to be diving into some of those settings, and I'm going to be showing you some of my workflows, including creating volume shaders and importing and rendering OpenVBD files. Let's jump into it. So guys, hopefully by the end of the tutorial, you should have something that looks like this. Now we're not gonna be going over how to build the landscape or the scene. I already posted a Patreon video. So if you want this project file and uh, all of these assets, it, it will be in the description along with a full tutorial on how to create this landscape. In this video, I wanna strictly focus on rendering the volume itself. And that's because Blender is not really set up, set up right, right off the bat to render volumes uh, correctly. So if you recall using other render engines, like I come from using Cinema 4D and Octane, uh, they usually have a scattering or volume bounces just depending on the render, en render engine settings. Uh, for example, I think Corona and Arnold are great examples of this. They have uh, volume light bounces. Uh, Blender is set up right off the bat to render at zero, which will give you this result right here. Um, that doesn't look too good to me. Now you could counteract this by uh, using the shader editor. So if I were to go into the shader to editor right here, uh, let's go jump into it. You could counteract that by trying to increase the value of this, but you have to realize that you're not going to get the proper light bounces in your scene as far as volumes are concerned. So what you really need to do, one of the first things you need to do when rendering volumes inside of Blender is increasing this volume from zero to let's say 50. Um, I read this article they were using, I believe Arnold, they found uh, 50 to 100 light bounces to be uh, the, the best quality. Uh, after that, you don't really notice the light bounces depending on your volume. Now for super large volumes, you might, but for everyday stuff like this, uh, 50 is definitely more than enough. You could probably even get away with 10 or less. Uh, I'm just trying to go for the highest quality here. Now, this is not the only setting that we need to adjust uh, depending on our scene. There's also this volume tab. So that was under our light paths tab and that was just the volume bounces. So this is the max number of bounces. Our cycles will allow the volume to bounce. In this case, it is 50. But there's also a uh, step render rate and viewport. So these are both the same essentially. Uh, they're both the same number. One is just changing the render settings for the viewport and one is changing the render settings for the render. So if you hover over it, you can read what it does, but essentially what it's allowing you to do is the step render rate is, is you increase this number, you're gonna get faster render times, but you're gonna get less detail in your volume. If you decrease this number, you're gonna get longer render times, but more detail inside your volume. So this is gonna be totally up to your scene. The default of one gives you pretty good results, under that, there's also max steps. So this is a maximum number of steps that uh, a light path will bounce through the volume before giving up. The higher this number goes, uh, the more it will increase your render times. And depending on the scene, sometimes this may be drastic. So if you're having trouble rendering out volumes on your scene, you can maybe change this to something like 100. And uh, it did not affect our quality that much as far as I can tell uh, and it greatly increased the or decreased the render time so just keep that in mind I think the default is 1024 so if you're rendering volumes I know that cycles is pretty slow for volumes uh, cycles X with blender 3.0 has gotten a lot better but still uh, I feel like of all the render engines I've used cycles definitely lags behind the most as far as rendering volumes go Okay guys, so now that we got that covered, let's get started by rendering some volumes. So there's two types of way to render volumes. One is using open B BBD files, which is the way I prefer because it's a much more realistic result and it takes less time creating a shader. Uh, by the way, if you want to, you can check out my open VBB clouds pack at the link below. There's over a hundred uh, very interesting clouds that I created inside Houdini. If you want more details, you can check out the website below. Um, but there's also another way of rendering clouds and volumes inside of Blender, and that is by using a shader. So if we want to, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a regular old cube and I'm going to scale this up a bit and then I'm going to create a shader on top of that we're going to delete the principal bsdf and then i'm going to go shift a and then there's some different uh shaders that blender offers so one of them is the principal volume which is the one that i prefer to use because 
uh, as far as Blender documentation is concerned, it encompasses everything that you would need inside of a volume, so all the settings are there. But there's also legacy ways, I guess you could say, uh, to render volumes. So we have the volume scatter and the volume absorption. So we'll draw the, drag all those in, um, and we can take a look at what they do and the different results we can get. So let's start off with the volume scatter right here. Uh, so Typically, you can use the volume scatter for a lot of things like uh, fog. Um, also, you could use it for different qualities of subsurface if that's something you're interested in. It is not a subsurface shader though, uh, but it gives you a very nice subsurface look. Uh, basically, you only have two settings here. Well, three. You have your color attribute, so we could change the color of the volume right here. And it's going to uh, actually yield the opposite result in most cases because it is the color of light you're scattering inside. Uh, and then you also have your density attribute here as well. So if we increase the density, it becomes much more dense and it gives us this uh, subsurface type look. And if we decrease the density, it becomes much less dense as well. And you can even see some of that red come in right there. And then I'm not even going to try to say this word, just the antrospathy, I guess that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this is going to determine the direction of light scattering inside the volume. This comes in very helpful for if you are trying to do fog. So if we were trying to do fog, we could uh, have this volume scatter in a certain direction. So if we want to pull the user's attention or the uh, viewer's attention towards the light, we could scatter it more towards the light or from to scatter it throughout the scene. Uh, we could pull it down and pull it more away from that light. Like I said, uh, we want to make sure that our settings are correct here. So. I'm going to go to our render settings and then we're going to go to our light paths right here, max bounces. Let's take that volume up from 0 to 50 and see what happens. So in this case, it got a lot brighter and it's a more realistic scatter. So that's why I covered that in the beginning because I feel like uh, people who are beginners or even uh, veterans, veterans inside of Blender might not have noticed uh, that it's set to 0 by default, which I don't believe it should be, but it is. Um, and then we also have our volume absorption. So this is going to strictly absorb light. So this is scattering light inside of it. It can give you some really cool results. This is going to just absorb light. Um, I see people use this for glass sometimes, also for potentially water, just depending on how they build their shaders. Um, another good thing you could do, and I've also seen this as well, is do a mix shader right here and plug that in. So shader one, shader two, and then volume. Uh, and then you can kind of get this more interesting result. I'm going to change this back to white and then turn the value up some right there. Uh, now you can kind of get this more realistic uh, type of volume because all volume scatters and absorbs uh, in the real world at least. So uh, mixing them is probably not a bad idea. Or what you could do is, whoops, or what you could do is just ignore all of that and just use the principal volume. And this is how I built the cloud shader. Now before uh, I show you all the cloud, which is a open VDB file, um, so you're, we're not gonna be building that cloud. Uh, this was built inside Houdini uh, using Houdini's nodes. It's not gonna be possible inside of Blender. It is possible, but not possible for me to show you. Um, I think Houdini's a lot easier when it comes to building volumes than Blender. So we're going to add in a principal volume and connect that to the volume right here. And now it's going to update and we can see our open VDB file. By the way, if you want to add an open VDB file, whether you're using my pack or your own pack or someone else's pack, uh, just click volume right here and import open VDB. So something you need to keep in mind when rendering volumes with Blender is uh, the file size of the volume will greatly affect the stability of the program, especially when importing. So if you're using my pack, I have four different resolutions. I would recommend starting off with a medium or high resolution and not trying to do ultra right off the bat uh, because Blender gets very, very unstable once the file becomes over 100 megabytes. Open VD V files are essentially just 3D textures. You can think of it as that. It stands for uh, volume database or voxel database, I believe. Um, so keep that in mind. You want to keep your VDB files if you're creating yourself. Uh, you want to give yourself some different options because too big of files will uh, give you more results, but also will lead to uh, a more unstable experience, which Blender 3.0 has gotten a lot better with that. Okay, so we have the principal volume right here. 
And if you want to know how I created that thumbnail shader, the first thing I do with volumes is I usually increase the value. And uh, just doing that right off the bat is already giving us this uh, more interesting result. I think this more, looks more like a cloud. But I also like to increase the saturation. And maybe we'll swing the hue around. And I kind of like this orange color. Now we can play with the density as well. So a density of seven is a little too dense. Maybe we'll try two. Uh, that's looking pretty nice right there. And that's gonna allow us to increase this value. Now, when it comes to volumes, you don't want a value of complete dark because that's just a black body, which doesn't exist, or completely white. Uh, in this case, it looks actually pretty good, but uh, this is not very realistic when creating shaders because you'll never have something that's completely white or completely black. Completely white means it's 100% reflective. Nothing like that exists in the real world. And completely black means it's 100% absorb, uh, can absorb everything 100%. Nothing like that exists in the real world. So I never take it up all the way unless I'm just being really lazy or it's for an artistic purpose, which in this case, I think it looks nice, pretty high like that. Uh, there's a lot of different attributes here. So we have color attributes, uh, density attributes. So you could map different attributes into this. Uh, if you wanted to, you could match a temperature attribute as well. So another thing I wanted to touch on was the absorption color. So we can absorb different colors into this volume. I'm going to turn the val value down on that. Uh, so let's just pull the saturation down on this color. And then let's play around with the absorption color. So by adding a color in our absorption, you can see that this is going to behave more like a cloud in the sky would um, versus just changing the whole color. So if we wanted some like purple tones in the cloud like this, the, the light in this case is coming from the side right here. It's going to hit and it's going to bounce. And then the cloud is starting to absorb this purple color. So the cloud itself will start to turn uh, purple. And this can give you some very realistic results like you would see if you step out and um, on a bright sunny day, if you look at the clouds, usually they're scattering a certain color into them and uh, absorption color plays a big role in that. Also the fact that the sky is blue plays a big role in that as well. Uh, we could play around with this. So we could do red, play around with the value and saturation and then also the density. and uh, just get different results out of this volume. I'm gonna turn this back to one. So that's another option right there to kind of play around. And if you wanted to, you can combine your absorption color with the color of your volume and kind of break that up. So I'm gonna swing that hue around and pull the saturation back and kind of just play with some different results. And then we can, we're scattering some red in there as well, which is a nice complementary color. If you wanted to, you could offset that with the blue too. So these are all just different tools that Blender allows you to play with and render volumes. As far as the thumbnail goes, I did a density of around two. Uh, I did not use any absorption in the absorption color, which you could use like a very bright color too and get some interesting results. Uh, but in this case, I left it at black. And then what I did is add in bright pink uh, reddish shader and we can try to find yeah so this is pretty close to the thumbnail I just wanted to show y'all real quickly how important it can be to uh, play with some of the render settings inside of blender especially when it comes to render time I would definitely look at your step render rate and viewport another thing that I want to show you is creating uh, clouds from scratch all inside of blender a great way of doing that is by using the noise shader, which believe it or not, this is how I created the clouds inside Houdini. Houdini just offers specialized tools to do this uh, versus Blender. You're using uh, tools that are, uh, they're great for a lot of situations, but they're very tough for creating some certain specific things like clouds. But nevertheless, we can try to recreate something like that. So we can take this noise texture and believe it or not, we can actually map our factor into our density. And then what I'm going to do is output just the noise texture. I'm going to add a color ramp and plug this in right here, plug this in right there. And then I'm going to pull the black values up. And now if we look at our principal volume, uh, you see we have some holes in it. So now if we scale this on our Y axis and our Z axis, 
And then when we get back under it, we can lift it up right there. I'm going to jump into our camera view again. Uh, you can see we're getting this cloud type effect. And let me pull that back down. And you can see we're getting this cloud type effect. So if I were to bring this up, then pull it forward in our viewport, then that almost looks like a bed of clouds. I could scale this more on the Y. And there you go. This actually looks very convincing and realistic as far as just throwing in a little shader. If we wanted to increase the detail, we could go to our detail right here. And then now our cloud is rendering with more detail. We could add some roughness in to break them up. Or if we wanted to bring them more together, take away the roughness. Uh, these are all just different things you can do with the uh, shader inside of Blender, which is really cool. Uh, like I said, uh, I prefer using VDB files just because to me, uh, they're more realistic. And uh, Houdini offers some really great tools that unfortunately Blender doesn't have, but uh, you still can build a really nice skylight uh, skyline just by doing that right there. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can check out the cloud pack at the link below and also the Patreon for the project file. Um, I have been using Blender for a while. I've uh, mostly stuck inside of Cinema 40 and Octane for my tutorials, but uh, with the release of Blender 3.0, I think it's time to start making some more Blender tutorials because I see this program offering some very, very interesting features that we'll get into in the future. So guys, again, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can check out the link below at the Patreon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you have your own special way of rendering volumes inside of Blender. Peace out.